Uga, fucking Uga cunts, and welcome back to another episode of CNN, the Cut News Network. With me, as always, is, of course, Ren from Renolations and Shitlords Hello. Anonymous. <laughs> Rob from the Mistaken Lunatics. Hello. And Ishtar from, well, here, mostly. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Hello. today we got a very special episode for you. It's, of course, our 15th episode, and today we've got Flat Earth Conventions? What? Yep. yep. Incel sex. <laughs> 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 he can't even read the shit. I don't wanna. Oh, my God. And Lamia <laughs> necklaces. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with tonight's episode? If you stop the world, I'd like to get off now. I, the I, whole, I, the yeah. whole goal of this of tonight's episode, Brockus was to see how many times we could make you rage. Open the space window. I want to suffocate and die. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the deep vacuum of space and just fucking kill over. Jesus the airline, Christ. The airline, bro. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Fuck this human race. I just, I want it to burn. All of it. I'm Fuck sorry. It. I'm sorry. You're, you, you're not allowed to make that decision. Nope. Your mother made that decision, and happy Mother's Day to anyone out there. <laughs> oh. Call your mama. Yes, call make sure mama. you tell her you love her. So there'll be plenty of moms going, why am I getting phone calls this late at night? Did you forget? I know, it's like I was just, <laughs> the cousin just reminded his whole audience that it's Mother's Day. For, for the UK viewers, it's probably like super early in the morning. And if you've got a mom who's up around now, you might just luck out and actually be like, oh, hey, mom, uh, sorry that I actually um, forgot. It's Mother's as Day long as yesterday. Before, as long as it's before midnight, you're in the clear. Well, for them, it would be the next day, though. Just say well, the card's in the mail. The card is in the mail. <laughs> That's right. You could say the card's in the mail, but they know that you're going to be full of shit. They don't know that. What if it? What if the card shows up a day late? I'm pretty sure they themselves went through stuff like this as as a as a child or a young adult for themselves. So they probably know all the tricks of the trade. Hey, be yeah. optimistic, Brockus. You don't know. I am not going to be optimistic. I refuse to be optimistic. I will continue to be pessimistic because I'm either right or pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so, never both never both at the same time though. <laughs> anyways seeing as how it's mother's day how about we start with something interesting let's start with the labia necklace <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to start the rage early. Well, it sounds like he's in so much pain okay. I'm in a lot of emotional mental and physical pain I don't know what's happening I okay just, Oh, Our goal wait. is to break Brockus by the end of the episode, folks. Things don't That's feel right. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Model turns her labia into a necklace after they were cut off in designer vagina surgery. Uh, well, hold on. Okay, I'm going to go throw up. I'm going to put myself on mute for right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go throw I, up. I got my bucket ready. I'm good to go. That's fucking gross. Continue, but I... Oh, it gets worse. <sighs> Be right back. Jesus Christ. Oh, 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 Brockus. Brockus, before Brockus. you go. What, what, what happened? We apparently have a MGTOW in the chat, so there you go. Oh, this will be fun. We all have keepsakes we treasure to remember special moments in our lives, from Teddy's to train tickets. For Tracy Kiss, her labia plasty, plasty surgery 10 months ago marks the end of a long term of long-term suffering. So wanting to have something to remind her of this momentous occasion in her life, she asked the surgeon if she would would be allowed to keep her severed labia minora or inner lips. The 29-year-old from Buckinghamshire likens it to keeping her children's milk teeth, locks of hair, their first baby grows, and her silicone breast implants. Okay, I she understand that. Wait, she kept her fake titties? Apparently she did. I, I can understand two of those things. I have hair from my kids' first haircuts. They're in the baby book. And I have kept, you know, the first tooth that falls out for the kid. Well, the rest is the baby growth. 
I have no clue. If your kid grows up and starts saving his own adult teeth that are falling out, then you have a problem. Yes, but if a mom keeps, like, eight, the first baby tooth that falls out, that's a mom thing. And if you keep your kid's fake tits, then that's a problem, too. You can go ahead and throw those away. No, no, don't keep the fake tits. This woman, this woman is a serial murderer waiting to happen. Yeah, she keeps very weird keepsakes. Tracy, a former glamour model and single mom of two, has suffered with pain and tenderness her whole life from her protruding labia, but she didn't realize that anything was wrong because no one talks about it. And then she decided on, um, apparently, December 2016, to have that part cut off to get rid of the pain. Okay, that, you know, that makes uh, logical sense. Yeah, at least there's a medical reason for it. Yeah, that, that's a medical reason, like, okay, that uncomfortable, just in j daily life, fine, you have a reason. My, my pussy's too fat. It just, it's, it, I can't live my life. Okay. It could make jeans or underwear very uncomfortable. No, I'm sure it, it can. It really does. From... Anyway. I'm just yes. saying, that, that's just, uh, I don't know, it's kind of humorous. Jeez. Oh god! I understand that it's a legit medical condition, but it's like, but it's like, it'll, it's like, oh, my dick's too big. It's a curse. That's that's a gift. <laughs> god blessed you with something miraculous. He gave you mule there, you son of a it's bitch. Always, Don't you shy away from it. I can here's never find part. swim shorts long enough. Here's here's the gross thing. For a while, Tracy kept her labia floating in a jar. On her kitchen, on her kitchen, uh, on, in her kitchen. Uh, Ugh. Uh, why? It, okay, so out on the counter or like in the fridge? It's, it's, <laughs> this is from a British newspaper, so it says on her kitchen dresser, which I can guess means like a pantry shelf of kind, some kind. I would assume so. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, what if the husband comes down and mistakes them for like a late night chili peppers to go on sandwich or some shit? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. No. Look, look. I, I, I'm going to say this because I need surgery on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Part of that surgery is going to involve sawing a piece of my bone off. Uh, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to actually have about an inch worth, maybe a little under an inch, of my collarbone sawn off i plan on actually taking that and actually wearing it like a necklace and shit because it's bone once i've cured it and cleaned it and actually fuck done stuff with it it's not going to be that fucking weird because you know it's me it's a part of me and it's a bone this Rock nasty is. bitch took flesh and kept it in a mason jar in her fucking kitchen ew it was not a mason jar it was a medical jar at the hospital. And um, Brockus, what? weird fact I know because of YouTube, bone, people keeping things that they are skeletonized that come off of them is actually more common than you think. Some people who have limbs taken off have done everything from turning them into lamps to carrying around. Uh, there's a woman on Instagram. She, ha she lost her foot and she had it skeletonized. And now she takes it on adventures with her. Dude, if I lost my leg, I'd have him turn. Uh, I'd have him turn my bones into like a fucking cane or some shit with a skull all carved into the top. That would be fucking badass. You're gonna do it. Do it right. Don't turn your pussy into a necklace. Yeah. Keep going, Ren. Keep going. It gets better from there. If yeah, I know. Bone that's understandable. Cool. Fine. Bone is not weird to keep around. Flesh is weird. Don't yes. do that. Continuing on. However, with the with time, the cutoff tissue has discolored from pink to pale gray, crinkled up in surgical fluid that and turned curly, which made them less of a trophy and more of a Halloween accessory. So I've been looking into ways to make them, ways to more effectively preserve them long term. 
and she even covered them in sparkle. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to uh, lie. If later we find out that she somehow uh, had some other surgery done to her and then turned it into, like, a food she ate. <laughs> oh, like like you know how women eat their placenta? Some women eat their placenta uh -huh. after the birth. Women <laughs> do not do that. Some Psychopathic, mentally damaged creatures do that. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm with you on that one. I just, I need to hold in. The... Mm. Continue on. You know, it's Tracy, funny because, oh, sorry, go ahead. Tracy started making crystal jewelry with her nine-year-old daughter, learning how to set resin effectively by practicing and practicing by creating glittery, glittery necklace pendants and jewels. Once she perfected her craft, Tracy set about drying out her labia on a makeshift wash line using Christmas card pegs and an ice cream box and cotton string. And they continue. she applied several coats of textured pearl finished paint, red, to match her bold, na bold nails and lipstick, dried them with a hair dryer, then dusted them off with glitter. She then yes. set the labia into the resin using an oval shaped uh, mold and voila, she had a necklace pendant ready. Okay, I will say that I did look at the necklace. And if I did not know that that was her vagina lips, um, it's not unattractive. Well, they're, they're all the dried out and glittered up and painted and shit like that. Yeah, I know. She, she did a good Boulder. job of, of making it look vaguely attractive if you don't know what it is. At least she didn't what make it, it is, into like a, cool a vagina pendant or something like formed them to look like a vagina, like reformed them to look like a okay. vagina. At um, least she Rob, didn't do that. Rob. Yeah. You need to go look at the pictures. Yeah. Oh, is it? I thought she had like formed it into a little circular pendant. No. The resin oh. is circular. It's not circular. Okay. Um, never mind. And her reason, sounds, Go ahead. It sounds like she's fingered her pussy more since she cut it off when she had it on. <laughs> yeah. And the reason she did this, the model and blogger shared her story to raise awareness about circumcision and hopes that no other woman suffers for so long the way she did. That's not how you fucking raise that awareness, you sick bitch. What Brock has said. Yeah. <laughs> I want to. I'll tell wanna you, raise awareness, awareness of you being a freak. Yeah, I want to raise awareness of, of, of fucking uh, terrible things and, and such. Hold on, let me go ahead and turn my shit into jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> Quote from her blog: My labia has been ha have my labia have been successfully preserved, are colorful, bright, and cheerful, and mark the end of my suffering. One step closer to breaking down the taboo of female circumcision through a unique talking point and bespoke jewelry that I will cherish forever. Uh, Question. I don't want jewelry that smells like cold cuts. Question. <laughs> yes. If nobody knows what it is, how on earth is this going to be a talking point? Or is she just going to wait until the first poor, innocent soul comes up and goes, I like your necklace. And then she's going to traumatize them for life. I like your necklace. It's my pussy. Okay. I don't know what to say about that. It was pretty. Now it's weird. Annie says, vagoplasty isn't circumcision. It is plastic surgery. And I happen to agree with that. Yes. Since yeah. female circumcision involves the clitoris. No one ever accuses women of being smart. No. <laughs> Drunk, maybe. High, potentially. Or the loser of a very bad bet that she's trying to make the best of. But not smart. <laughs> How long do you think it takes in a normal conversation for her to bring it up that she has her pussy around her neck? Uh, five seconds. <laughs> and after a while, her friends are always like, oh, God, come on. Because she wants to spread we awareness. We know that it's your pussy on your neck. Yeah, is it, she yeah. wants to spread awareness, but how often does that topic come up in normal conversation? 
No, she, she it's like it, it's just, she basically probably goes like this. Or with her probably goes like this. Hey, I like your necklace. I, I thank you. I made it myself. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's my own labia lips. That's gross <laughs> now. <laughs> She's like, it's my own lady lips. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, excuse me. Someone's calling me. Yes, I'll be right there. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> you said you need me quick in the back to go restock the random thing? Run. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, even though I would love to jump over to somebody else's stories, I think, Ren, don't you have a semi-relatively uh, uh, related <laughs> story to add into this? Fucking nightmare! We have more. Oh yeah, there, there, there's a second trend. Uh, this is a na this is a nail art trend. Mm -hmm. It's um, oh, it's different. And uh, for the sake of here, you know, for the sake of uh, the channel, different. for the sake of the channel not getting in trouble, I will put the link into chat so people in chat can look at it if they really want to. But I will not screen share for the sake of Schmeckel's channel. Vagina nails are the trend you never ask for. <laughs> I had heard about these, but I hadn't seen them. Oh, that's fucking disgusting. For anyone who is unaware of what was just said, vagina nails. In other words, <clears throat> people have decorated their nails with women's pussy. Yeah, I thought that was called fingering. Uh, oh no, wait, no, R wrong decoration. Okay. Uh, trends are inherently subjective. Some people be will be all about them, while others take a hard pass. The emerging Instagram trend of sporting tiny vaginas on your fingernails is definitely no exception. But even those who would never dream of using miniature vulvas as an accessory can admit some of these take. Ser some serious time and dedication and yes the first one they show it, it looks like a little vagina with a pearl on top as the one of the nails actually like three-dimensional but i'm I, I like you ren but i'm not gonna go look you don't have to look okay just so you know just don't look no don't, don't look if you you do not have to look if you do not want to some will go just simple drawings, interpretive art. Others have gone 3D. And one person decided to go full ass, pussy, dick and balls, and boobs. <laughs> There's a photo of the boobs and the fucking dick and balls. <laughs> That's a page. I don't know why, but now I, I... Curiosity! I've been too curious today. I went and saw horrible, horrible things that I never wanted to see. And this is going to be one of them. Also, someone kill all of my neighbors and their dogs. <laughs> the boobs are hilarious. They're like different shapes and the nipples are all poking in weird directions. Oh, God. I don't like the fact that the, the one on the left with the little pearl on top. I don't like that how, how realistic that looks. Like she was born with a, a defect. And that particular finger has an actual vagina on it and shit, and it's just really fucking weird. At least the one that has all white can try to claim it's a flower. The boob one is hilarious. And then <laughs> right, the boob one is hilarious. It's and then the, the cock one, that's it's funny, it's so... but you need to not do that ever. <laughs> I know. Don't don't recommend. Don't do if you have an actual job. And the, and the paintings of the vaginas have, like, fucking little stubble. Have, like, stubble around them. Can't we just go back around. to really shitty acrylic nails? Can't, can't that be the style that everybody's talking about when it comes to, like, weird nail paintings and stuff that people don't want to see? But, you know, there it is. The fucking children are going to have nightmares and shit because their acrylic nails look scary. <clears throat> no, now we got to have fucking uh, body parts and appendages on there. What's your definition of scary of uh, acrylic nails? Because on Halloween, I've been known to do acrylic nails, but make it look like my nails are dripping with blood. Okay, that's, that's, cool. that's really cool. But no, I remember, 
<laughs> I remember being a kid when acrylic nails were really, really get like everywhere. Like almost anywhere I went, there would be some lady with acrylic nails. And one time I saw a kid legitimately get fucking terrified as soon as they saw the the lady like go out to like reach for something. I guess her mom had some, but this little girl was just fucking terrified. She just freaked out because she thought the lady was a monster. She she didn't know. <laughs> Hey, if you get a handy from somebody with pussy nails, does that count as getting laid? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it depends, on how, it depends on how involved she is with her nails. <laughs> what if she's backhanding your, your fucking dick all night? Okay, see, so yeah, that's <laughs> no. But if it's just like your classic, no, that doesn't count. That brings a whole new meaning to pound that pussy. <laughs> We're, tr we're slowly working our way towards fully traumatizing Brockus, guys. Yes, we're I, gonna... I'm pretty sure I'm already traumatizing these He's cracks. cracks. We're going to break him. Is there anything more? With the nope, that's, it, that's, it, that's, that's it. Okay, all right. We're going to... No. He'll live for the next article. Does anyone have more vagina stories? Closest um, I have is maternal instinct only for moms. Let's go with that. Let's see that one. That's uh, come on, Ishtar. Give me, give me maternal instinct. I'm gonna go murder my dog. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> you you tell their your story. I'm gonna go kill this fucking dog. All right, you do that. Uh, this actually comes to us courtesy of the National Geographic. Is maternal instinct only for moms? Here is the science. Before and after Sarah Blaffer Hurdy, that is her last name is Hurdy, met her infant grandson for the first time, she spit into a vial. Two weeks later, when her husband arrived to meet the newborn, she had him do the same thing. Lab tests later revealed that Hurdy's level of a brain chemical called oxytocin, O-X-Y-T-O-C-I-N, I don't know how to pronounce it. Oxytocin? Oxy yeah. Oxytocin, okay. Spiked by 63% that evening. Her husband's spit showed a 26% jump after his initial meeting, but several days later, it also increased to 63%. There was no difference in the end result between me and my husband. It just took him a little more exposure to his grandson to get there. Now a professor emer emerita at the University of California, Davis, the esteemed anthropologist, has written extensively about the science of human maternity. All mammalian females have maternal responses or instincts, but this does not and is often assumed mean every mother who gives birth is automatically ready to nurture her offspring, says Hurdy. Rather, gestational hormones and prime gestational hormones prime mothers to respond to stimuli from her infant, and after birth, step by step, she is responding to the cues. That's not only the case for women who physically give birth, Hurdy and her husband are grandparents, but it's not at all surprising to her that they both experience similar bumps in oxytocin, a hormone associated with maternal bonding. And as far as she's concerned, mothers who give birth and mothers who adopt should both be considered biological mothers based on the changes that happen in their bodies when they become parents. Both undergo similar, God, this is a long word, neuroendocrinological transformations even in the absence of giving birth or of lactation, says Hurdy. Hurdy's work speaks to the many shades of motherhood that are possible in humans. In many societies, who gets to be a mother and who wants to be one looks different today than it did just a few days ago, decades ago, not days ago. More than ever, women are delaying when and how many children they have or living happily without any offspring at all. Same-sex parents are increasingly accepted, and earlier this year, a transgender woman became the first to breastfeed her baby. While everyone has a unique idea of what it means to be a mom, science can tell us a lot about why moms of all kinds behave the way they do. I will warn you that this is a little bit of a longer um, article, but to sum it up, Chemically speaking, well, not summing it up. Chemically speaking, one of the most powerful drivers of maternal behavior seems to be the famous feel-good hormone oxytocin. 
This com complex neural peptide plays a variety of roles in ma mammal reproduction, including pair bonding, wound contraction, and the release of breast milk. An orgasm, eye contact, hugs, soft touch, all these things release oxytocin, says Bianca J. Marlin, a postdoctoral researcher at Columbia University's Department of Neuroscience. In 2015, Marlin co-authored a study in the journal Nature... Yeah. Excuse me, guys. In the journal Nature on the effect oxytocin had on mice. When female virgin lab mice heard the cries of young mice pups, they ignored them or in some cases cannibalized them. Mice mothers, however, would seek out the source of the cry to retrieve and care for the pups. Then they injected the virgin mice with oxytocin and they stopped trying to cannibalize them. And I'm paraphrasing now. They stopped trying to cannibalize them and return, learned to retrieve the pups the same way the moms did. They also tried it in... Um, it was not just mice that they later on tried this in. They also tried it in dogs. Mm -hmm. And basically what they found was the, the oxytocin that will let male, female, virgin, not virgin, respond with the same maternal instincts. Which I think is pretty cool. It just well, takes I mean, longer really for guys to, to do it. Did we really need a study to like to know that like baby fever is a thing and that people's behavior changes around like newborn, or, like infants and stuff like that. Well, my theory was, I mean, we, we now have a, well, we now have a site, you know, we know what chemicals are being produced and stuff that cause these feelings, but which I guess is kind of interesting, but did we really need a study to, to know that baby fever was a thing? Baby fever is a thing indeed. And my theory always was, the oxytocin floods your brain as a woman because you go through so many hours of labor and you have to like the damn thing that comes out. Otherwise, it's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature's way of rewarding you for all the, all the pain she just puts you through. Yeah. Here's a don't, nice flood of pleasure. <laughs> hear that, ladies? You don't really love your kids. It's your body tricking you. Um, not tricking you. It's just... Right after I'm, labor, you might not be, they might not be your favorite person. <laughs> Them and the father. That too. <laughs> All right. What do we, uh, we, uh, you said that was a long article. You got a, it was, I, it was a long article. So I just kind of paraphrased it. Ah, I, mean, okay. I can go we, through we, and continue reading it if you want the details. Well, I just, uh, I mean, details I are fine. I just, are they really trying to say that that women who haven't give birth are just as legitimate mothers as women who have? When they're talking about the neuroscience of it, that's basically what they're saying is because adopted mothers also experience the same bump in oxytocin. Basically, babies make you happy. Yeah, pretty much. I, I just, <laughs> I just, we already knew that. And I just think they're trying to find a way to use that as an excuse to call everybody a mother who, who's not, who has it. Well, if you adopt a baby, yes, you are that, that baby's mother, but there is still a difference between adopting a baby and giving birth to your own child. They're, like that is a major difference. I think you would have to speak with an adopted mother to, uh, to have this argument, I am not a mother, so I have no dog in this fight. I can understand the adoptive mother thing because a lot of adoptive mothers, they, for some, not all, most of them, it's the fact of they wanted to have a kid, but they couldn't for whatever reason. So they still kind of go through their own trials and tribulations to get the child whether it be having to go through the adoption process or giving birth. So it's a, in a way it's its own, it's its own ordeal to go through. It's its own. I'm just saying, like, like it's such a, it's such a, uh, that is a big difference. It's such a minor thing to try and change society about. Yeah. And all you have to do is be like, yes, I adopted my kid. I, I'm not as bio, you know, I'm not my kid's biological mom. I'm his mother. I'm not his biological mother. Now, like, how hard is that to yeah. fucking cope with? <laughs> but at the same time, 
you know, you went through all of this to get your, you know, to, to adopt this child. Why would you want to differentiate? It doesn't, yeah, exactly. I mean, to them, does it really matter if the child is adopted or biological? It's just, this is my child. Yeah. If you're raising the child, it's your kid. Yeah. And, and he says in the chat that I'd never win a Nobel Prize. I'm not trying to win a Nobel Prize. I just, and I'm not, I'm not saying that people who adopt kids, like they're, they are total legitimate mothers, but I don't think we need a science study to give an excuse to, to make, I was like, just, I mean, how hard is it to cope with the fact that, that you adopted your kid rather than gave birth to him? Well, that's not what the study was about to begin with. The study was about the neuro, the science of how um, creatures react to babies and the chemicals going through the head, you know, because it wasn't just females that they injected the oxytocin with. They also injected it with males and the males developed the same urge to take care of the children or the pups or whatever you want to call them. It just takes them longer <laughs> to learn to take care of them. I mean, that's basically one of the things that they were covering. So it has nothing to do with whether or not they're adoptive or not. It's okay, maybe I misunderstood a little section at the beginning. That, yeah. Because uh, that, that I heard something how they were talking about how uh, women who give birth and women who don't give birth are are – Fuck, I don't know. I, I don't know. It said the way it was worded made it sound like they were trying to. Okay, I know what exactly I know which portion you're you know. talking about. Um, you're talking about how Hurdy basically said that uh, because the changes of the oxytocin and the mentality is a biological base, um, that they should both be considered biological mothers, literally in terms of there the biology that's, that's the of your brain has changed, not in terms of, okay, the you're a biological mother. physicality of what you're, of what you're, okay. Okay. Under, did, See, I, I easy enough. Because when I came back, we were talking about adopting kids and all that stuff. I'm like, why are we talking about rent-a-kid systems? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually really. I don't like this kid. You got one in black. <laughs> that's, that's the most fucked up thing to, when you think about it. Is like, what are foster parents other than like, or like you know, foster homes and shit like that, other than like you know, just rent a kid, fucking facilities and shit. Well, th there are a bunch of fucking scumbags that take advantage of the system. But I think the the idea is to give kids an actual like even if they're in the foster care system to give them a home with like adult parents and supervision and you know uh, going to school and living normal lives and not lives in a uh, in a government facility. Yeah, there's and a lot. There of are some really nice people who will uh, give up their home for children to live more normal lives and you know more consistent stable family lives than uh than what a government facility you know a home can provide a government home so i think that's the purpose of it and good for anybody who does it for those reasons and voodoo on the people who do it for terrible reasons yes to, to for the tax benefits there are like horror stories of families who load up their house with like 17 foster kids Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but there are I've horror heard. stories about every aspect of yeah. that's that sort of thing. I even actually heard of a horror story of this uh, mother and father who were continuously adopting um, in each like county they could uh, little girls, and their purpose of doing this was to inevitably raise little daughters. Um, who would turn into actually tiny wives for the man. And it was all kinds of fucked up. I don't like that story. Yeah. Nope. Uh... We should move away from that story because <laughs> then there will be genuine rage and not Brockus rage, which is far more entertaining than genuine rage. Yeah. <laughs> True enough. So how about we <laughs> how about oh god, I just looked at one of the fucking titles we have. Son of a bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's, he's breaking, I, folks. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's let's move on to Rob's story. Rob, what you got for us? What 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 kind of you got oh, funny stories? Would you like to hear what's been happening in Florida? This yes, week? yes, oh, Florida. What's going on in the shit state that's like just a little less shittier than fucking California? <laughs> uh, we have really feel Bacon about Man California? runs around. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was mocking Brockus about how he really feels. I know, and I I wanted you to continue. Oh, okay. I did not mean to interrupt that mocking of Brockus whatsoever. So tell us, Brockus, how wonderful is it to live in California? It, it sucks. The state never knows what fucking temperature it wants to be. It doesn't know what season it is. We're supposed to be in spring, but I go outside and I still need a fucking jacket because it's not done being cold. But then there are days where I go outside and all of a sudden it's like, well, maybe we think we're summer now. And I'm like, can you let April and May be April and May, you fucking goddamn bastard. <laughs> this is my current break. All right. <laughs> I hate the people here, too. <laughs> we'll get on the people later. Okay, Rob. All right, we have Naked Man Runs Around Airport, Threatens Bomb at Daytona Beach Airport, police say. Uh, a man was taken into custody Friday after he made reference to a bomb threat at Daytona Beach International Airport, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office said. Volusia County Sheriff Michael Chitwood said deputies responded to a call about a naked man running around the airport. John T. Greenwood, 25, was on the baggage carousel shouting, we've got to get out of here, to the deputies, authorities said. Was he naked? Wow, he was, he was on. Okay. <laughs> John Greenwood entered the airport restroom, made a hole in the wall, inserted a backpack, came out naked, climbed onto the baggage carousel where deputies took him into custody. He claimed a bomb was about to go off. Body camera video was released, and that is included in the article. I, I have seen the body camera footage. It is uh, no, no dick shots, thank God. Small uh, Yes, yeah, small go, mercy. Did you go looking for them, Robert? No, it's right here in the article. It's included here in the article. No, I meant, did you go looking for the dick shots? No, I did not. I just happened to notice that there were none because it was video of a naked guy. I'm telling you, you, you if gotta that check dick pops the... out, you, you, <laughs> it's just but something. If anyone's ever seen the movie um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, you don't expect to see jason siegel's fucking dick yeah exactly i movie. brock has fucking nailed it right there <laughs> but there it is <laughs> multiple times and it's just it they don't cut away and it's just like why why jason why? <laughs> so i can understand when he's watching a video of a body cam basically you know you notice when there's no dick you'll if notice a dick guy, you notice when you don't see the dick you know, yeah there's a there's a clear and obvious absence because <laughs> you're, you're staring at a naked fan and if you're not seeing his junk then you know <laughs> uh okay the video shows deputies ordering greenwood to get on his stomach where they would shock him with the taser greenwood did not comply and the taser was deployed Deputies asked Greenwood if he had taken any drugs so they could properly treat him. Greenwood told him he had taken Molly, but he refused medical treatment. Ah. I just, I just want to get out of here, bro. Guy. I'll go to jail. I'll go wherever the hell you want me to go. Book me and get me the hell out of here, please. Deputies did not find a bomb. Only Greenwood closed <laughs> up a backpack inside the women's bathroom that was under construction. Uh... Let's see. Did he shit in the bag and put it into the wall? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm just trying to th <laughs> that that would be a fucking chemical chemical warfare. Yeah. Chitwood said Greenwood faces a slew of charges that include exposure of sexual organs, resisting arrest, false report concerning planting a bomb, and burglary. He will get ninety days and a slap on the wrist. Yeah, he he was just a fucked up dude on drugs. He didn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But they don't take bomb threats at airports lightly. No. Wait, oh, wait, 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 I got a question. Is, is was this a white dude? Yes. 
Oh, okay. oh he's screwed then. He's screwed. I'm just saying, because if it was a black guy for some goddamn reason, he would have been arrested for concealing a weapon. But, you know, that's just... <laughs> that's, that's like, Subtle dick joke. He's on. Bam, bam, bam. He's coming right for us. He's got a billy club hanging <laughs> between his legs. Get him. Sergeant, I'm pretty sure that's his dick. <laughs> Quite impressive, son. Uh, and that is the end of my story. Hey, uh, dude gets on drugs, freaks. You just don't freak out at airports, man. I just... Some people are crazy. This is why the only drug you should be taking at an airport is a Prozac. Like, okay. If there was ever a really good campaign against drug use for, like, psychedelics or stuff like that, the entire state of Florida is the perfect <laughs> fucking example of why you don't. I genuinely think they seed the water. In Florida? Yes. When they, just, they just toss it into the water and wish people the best of luck. How they get people to come back. That might be interesting because like, it's kind of how do we make Florida a really fucked up state? I, I got this idea. We're going to systematically put a, a certain amounts of acid into the water. Yeah, but so only the people, for like, they have the in infrastructure built around, built up so Florida is our test state. That's <laughs> that's the government's testing grounds. No, 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 no. This is a tourism thing, Brockus. This is how they get people to come back year after year and spend <laughs> money at Disney World and Universal. <laughs> they, they, they drug them up so fast and so badly that they think they're having a good time. That's an interesting campaign for, uh, for you know, tourism in uh in florida come to florida we have gorgeous orange uh orchards and and all kinds of great things we have disney world we have gorgeous beaches crazy white people on psychedelic drugs we have a <laughs> bunch of fucking great stuff over here in florida come on down uh excuse me do you want to explain the naked man running down the street screaming aliens are inside my head eating people's faces off I don't want to talk about that. That's just <laughs> sun exposure. Sun exposure. Make sure to put your suntan lotion on. You'll be fine. That might also be one of the reasons why people in Florida are fucking <laughs> crazy. Oh, and uh, you know what? That's the best part about Florida. Mark Como is going to be in Florida soon. I guess he's moving there for some reason. Mark, enjoy him. <laughs> Mark, watch your face, bro. <laughs> don't drink any of the water. Just <laughs> yeah, drink bring your own water. Bring your own water. Bring your own water. Buy bottled water. I wouldn't even trust the bottled water sold in Florida. I'm just letting you people know that there are some psychedelic drugs out there, like acid, that can still get into the blood through the skin. It is possible. <laughs> SLC Punk taught me that. Oh, Mark, I can't wait till I'm reading your article on this show. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, if, I swear to God, if, if a Florida man story comes out, like, Two years from now, and there it the and Mark is in the headline. <laughs> Florida man does crazy ass shit. Florida local Florida man Mark Como. I swear to God, I'm just gonna lose my fucking mind. I'm gonna <laughs> hit up Robin and be like, "What did your brother do? You know what he did? What did your we, brother do?" <laughs> we would have to run a special episode just for that, just celebrating oh, yeah. that. No, Rob would be on air going. Who's the good twin now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I always knew, Mark. Even his kids, he always struck me. He, he's kind of had the Florida man vibe. <laughs> I warned my parents, man. I warned our parents. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ. All right. Mark, please please make that happen. You'd be a fucking legend. <laughs> you would, actually. You, you would be more of an e-celeb than most of the people that we talk to. <laughs> Like you, I would make you famous, bro. your praises. Your fame would skyrocket. You would dwarf Logan Paul's fucking numbers. You'd make Jake Paul cry with how fast you blow up overnight. He says. Uh, he says he's offering a t uh, headline: <coughs> "Lord of Man commits killing spree, blames twin." <laughs> <laughs> my twin is in my head. My twin is in my head. <laughs> 
Next thing we know, we get a call from Rob going, I'm in jail. Can someone I know. It's like, I'm in I'm in jail for uh killing like 13 people in Florida. It's like I'm not even in Florida. We saw it coming. You know, oh, oh, what would make it even funnier is if he actually just so happened to move into the same city and same area as failure. And so at some point, failure uploads a video onto his channel, or they even watch it on Kumite. Like, look at this crazy guy running down the street naked. Like, I apparently he killed a bunch of people later on, but like this is I, I caught this several hours before, you know, and it turns out it was fucking Mark the entire time. Like he took too many drugs. Fucking ran around naked and then killed a bunch of people. <laughs> Play rock for it. Oh, oh, Mark, Florida try, also to, try has to make it a, yeah. Try to make a Florida story where people don't die, Mark. Have whatever you do. I'm trying you to keep what? it more lighthearted and avoid the death. The the, the Florida yeah. man death. Okay, yeah, you know what? The I, I Florida man who like stole liquor from a. The stole liquor naked, you know, or something like that. You can hope yeah. for that. So every guy who goes to the liquor store. Or gets his dick caught in a fan boat. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> That'll give us lots of material to laugh at. So so Bruni is saying that Florida also has uh, Liz Reptile, Zeph, and Yogi. So, yeah, that would be reason enough to stay the fuck out of Florida, except I'm going to go ahead and trump that right now by basically pointing out Logan Paul, Jake Paul, uh, Ice Poseidon, <laughs> the IRL streamers, including Baked Alaska, Aaron, and all of those crazy-ass people live in my state. Boom, I beat you. Because this was a competition. It wasn't a competition that I wanted to win. Doesn't Rice yes. Gum live in Cali, too? Yes, Rice Gum also lives in Cali. Uh, so shittiest people. So does Tana Mojo, I believe. Oh shit. <laughs> Tana Mongo. Yes. Uh -huh. So I I I uh, my state currently harbors some of the worst personalities on YouTube. <laughs> Fucking Aren't you break. proud? I'm not. Be proud, Broncus. And Mark is and now Mark is now saying he is staying away from boats. <laughs> oh Mark's gonna stay away from both. I'm gonna get me, Sky Williams, and Markiplier, and we're fucking leaving this state. Fuck this place. Are you just gonna kidnap Markiplier? No, but me and Asian Andy are gonna uh, collectively drug him and, and take him away from here. It's not Make kidnapping sure if he doesn't know what's happening. Make sure you bring Chica. Of course. You can't leave Chica behind. I'm not going to leave that adorable fucking pup behind. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm just making sure. Don't abandon puppies. And Mark, you may say you're staying away from boats, but watch the next Florida man after you move there, the next Florida man headline we get is Florida man gets dick cut off by rodeo, by a propeller or whatever on a, on boat while on dry land because boat landed on him. <laughs> Blames twin. He still blames twin. <laughs> Trippy poop. I refuse to leave Marky Moo to California people. That's just not that's, the cards. Why are you calling him Marky Moo? Because that's one of his nicknames is Marky yeah. Moo. Mm. That's what he calls himself sometimes. Anyways, also so Marky Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love that man. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Anyways, we're moving on from the really crazy. Shit, especially from Florida, man. We're gonna move over back on to uh, since Ren got two in a row, let's go back over to an Ishtar story. Oh, great. Which one would you like? Uh, scientist disappointment, um, Australia is a fake country or a flat earth convention? Okay, I don't want to have a headache too goddamn soon because I've dealt with stuff that almost made my stomach turn. So let's let's go with uh, fucking Australia. I'm, I'm this comes courtesy to, of, to us, courtesy of the Daily Star. Flat Earth bombshell. Australia is fake country invented to cover up mass murder. An outrageous new flat earth theory suggests that Australia is actually just one big hoax, which would explain the animals. I've heard about this. I've heard about the Australia hoax. This should be good, then. So the latest Barry, he, he's living in a fake country. So bearing sugar tits, suit yourself, Declan Black, and Peach Bailey. All they're all in, in 
country? No, they're, they're all, all in on the conspiracy. Yeah, they're all actors. Paid. It's a actors. soundstage. Oh, no. okay. So, so the the big ass structure, the famous fucking building or amphitheater. It's in South America. It's in Sydney, Australia. It's oh, it's all South America now. Yeah, okay. it's in South. It's on like islands or on some hidden cities in South America. Okay. And all the crazy, yeah, are, crazy animals and in and uh, insects that are are legendary out there. They're all CGI. Oh. Uh, Are you ready? <laughs> the latest bonkers conspiracy theory doing the rounds suggests Brit officials dreamed up Oz to cover up a brutal atrocity. According to one flat earther, the land down under is just all smoke and mirrors and a ruse we thought responsible for greats like Kylie Minogue and Hugh Jackman. Australia is not real, they wrote in a viral Facebook post. It is a hoax made for us to believe that Britain moved over their criminals to someplace. In reality, all these criminals were loaded off the ships on into the waters, drowning before they could ever see land ever again. It's a cover-up for one of the greatest mass murderers in history. The post, which has been shared 50,000 times, goes on to claim that anyone who thinks they've visited Australia is terribly wrong. Australia, a member of the British Commonwealth, is home to more than 24 million people. The <laughs> Australia is fake theory surfaced last year but has its roots in a Flat Earth Society forum thread from 2006. So 24 million people are delusional. Or paid yeah, actors. All actors. Is That's, it just just Australia? Is New Zealand affected by this? It's yep. just it's just Australia, from what I can. New Zealand tell. was not mentioned. Oh, oh, oh! That explains it. Ju it goes on to explain the twenty four million post. The post reckons all Australians are nothing more than computer generated personas, and if you have ever been to down under yourself, you're terribly wrong. And apparently, pilots are all in on it and have been just flying you to parts of South America all these years. Those who believe the flat Earth theory claim our planet is shaped like a flat disk instead of a sphere. The leading theory suggests Earth is a disk with the Arctic Circle in the center and Antarctica, a 150-foot-tall wall of ice around the rim. NASA has proved the Earth is round by using satellites, GPS, and images from space, but flat earthers believe the space agency is lying. Theorists claim that the satellite images and evidence pointing to a spherical Earth are part of a round Earth conspiracy orchestrated by NASA and other government agencies. Proponents of the bizarre theory also claim the Earth is stationary in space rather than orbiting the sun. A number of high-profile celebrities have made the shock revelation that they believe in the Flat Earth conspiracy. Former England cricketer, Fl this name cannot be real, Freddie Flintoff revealed <laughs> last year. <laughs> I know. I almost said Freddie Flintstone. <laughs> um, revealed last year he couldn't stop listening to a podcast called Flat Earthers and was beginning to believe their theories. Thousands of Flat Earth believers gathered in Birmingham this weekend at the UK's first ever conference. The convention, which took place over three days, saw nine speakers take the stage to explain well, their theory as to why the Earth is flat. One speaker even proved, even claims he has proven gravity doesn't exist. What? <laughs> How did Florida being fake somehow devolve into flat earthers? Australia and being fake. Goddamn fake, not gravity Florida. not existing. How? How the fuck? I don't understand how these people are still alive with one brain cell. I'm good. I want to <laughs> find them. I want to find them and I want to beat the shit out of them. All of them. Man, I uh, <laughs> I heard this one flat earther on a stream talking about how uh, there are actually like four suns and four moons, and and uh, at what is it? They only shine through like these holes in the canopy, and the way they're shining through and which sun is shining through is uh, how like sunsets happen on different parts 
that like supposed parts of the globe. Mm-hmm. It's fucking insane. It's fucking are, insane. Are they oh. shit. from Florida? <laughs> are they, it, it, these flat earthers start from Florida and they just kind of migrated all over the place? Is that what happened? No, they're crazy as who discovered the internet. By the way, never get into an argument in your in chat with a flat earther. I did that once. They don't think What's photos there? are in one of no, in one of my in one of my live streams. I had a flat earther there. there. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. And um I was there for a little bit. And uh, they don't think fo- they don't think photographs from space are evidence. They think it's all CGI. Yeah, that was a fun stream. I got to hear a name dragon lose his fucking shit and progressively get drunker and drunker on stupidity. Oh yeah. He got mad. Mad is not a strong enough word to describe what Inane was feeling. <laughs> yeah. Out of rage, wow. fury, blind... Blind, drunk, and rage probably be a good description. Oh, okay. Yeah. When you're so <laughs> angry, you can no longer see to kill the person you're talking to. So, according to this person who wrote this article, Australia isn't real. It's mm-hmm. a cover-up for the biggest mass murder... Ever to have happened. That's correct. But there is no proof that the Earth is round because somehow that fucking equation of Florida not being real. Also, yeah, gravity has been disproved. Oh, I want to smack you. I want to smack this person. Who is this? No, 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 no. Who wrote this? Rockus, all you have to do is tell the flat earthers who don't believe in gravity to walk to the top of a tall of a really tall building and jump off. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. If gravity doesn't gravity? exist, they're not going to fall to their death. Exactly. So there you go. Uh, that is, uh, craziness. I wonder how many flat earthers we actually know <laughs> that you just don't know that they're flat earthers. That's a good question. Oh, there is one who works at my job. I'm not kidding. That. How do they explain the curvature of the Earth when you look at the horizon? Uh, See, I wanted illusion. to ask him that, but I couldn't find him. Optical illusion. Ah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, to answer your question, Brockus, Charlotte Iconin wrote this for the Daily Star. So this is a person reporting on what was said. Yes. Oh, okay. But not it was, necessarily it was, a believer. It was Freddie. What was it again? Freddie Flintoff. Flintoff. <laughs> That's got to be a fake name. Oh my God! I think I think Jack Mehoff was taken, so he just went with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, the pain is real. Someone should go tell Bering and Sugar Tits they're actually computer programs. He'll probably oh, say I something will. along the lines of no shit. <laughs> I, I'm actually going to tweet that out right now. So I just found out from some crazy Flat Earth article that and I'm going to tag all the Australians I know. Australia is a lie. It's all CGI and computer programs. We're on to you, Australia. Actually, it's Britain's fault. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. I don't think we can say anything more about the crazy conspiracy theorists here. So we're going to go ahead. Are you sure? Because I have have the... um, I watched an entire Flat Earth Convention article. We we will come back to that. (laughs) (laughs) After you've had a chance to calm down from the rage. Yes, Ren. What do you have? Wait, Ren has terrible stuff. Rob, what do you have? Oh, I got some good stuff. I got some good stuff. All right, give us another funny one. All right, my next one is uh, headline: Man tries to hide legless fugitive girlfriend by stuffing her in plastic bin. That sounds. That immediately grabs your attention, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a good headline. That's a good headline. Oh, this article, this, I don't like the way this starts, so this is totes crazy. That's how the article fucking starts. Are you serious? Who wrote yeah. this? 12-year-old? It's the New York Post. Uh, this is by oh, Max God. Yeager. 
Uh, maybe that's the only thing he could think of. I would have maybe gone with something along the lines of. <laughs> Good I, afternoon, fellow yeah. kids. <laughs> this is Totes Crazy, guys. Totes Cray Cray. <laughs> is Totes Flintoff cray spelled cray. the way I think it is? Is what? Is Flintoff spelled the way I think it is? F L I N T O F F. And his first name is Freddie, right? F R E D D I E. That's all I need to continue, Rob. <laughs> okay. A Florida man tried to help his legless girl girlfriend evade police capture by hiding her in a plastic tote, only to be foiled because a cop saw the whole thing. Chrissy Lee Anderson, 39. Okay, this is some crazy shit. Chrissy Lee Anderson, 39, who lost her legs to injuries from a 2015 gun battle with cops, was on the run after skipping out on a court date in Orange County where she was standing trial for armed kidnapping and an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer stemming from the 2015 incident. He picked a winner. Yeah, that that's a solid girlfriend right there. Hey, Ma, look who I'm bringing home. At least that's a girlfriend <laughs> that will help you hide the bodies. That's true. <laughs> When Polk County Sheriff's Office deputies and U.S. Marshals came knocking at her boyfriend, John Robert Carr Jr.'s Winter Haven home Tuesday, the 48-year-old man claimed Anderson wasn't there. Catch is, one of the officers spied him through a bedroom window, cramming the four-foot-tall woman into a plastic bin moments earlier. Uh, uh, sheriffs arrested the couple, the Tampa Bay Times reported. In 2015, Anderson held up a Burger King with a BB gun and threatened one of her relatives there, according to an Orlando Sentinel account from the time. A cop responding to the incident instructed her to drop the air gun, and she had sent pointed it at him, prompting him to open fire, the paper reported. She lost her legs from the injuries she sustained, the ledger reported, citing information from sheriffs. And that is the end of the article. And uh, the Remy brought up a good point in chat. The totes uh, joke in the beginning could be a reference to plastic bins, as some plastic bins have been called totes before. Ooh! So it could have been a pun. pun. It could have been a very subtle pun. Very nice. Okay, <laughs> I'll run with that and forgive the writer. <laughs> We're gonna go with he. He came up with a very subtle pun just because he thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. He's forgiven. Hey. When we flip the flat earth upside down and shake off all the idiots, we will allow him to survive by the power <laughs> of the Illuminati. <laughs> Seeking Origin says, well, at least he can't be claimed to ever run away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trippy Coop <laughs> says, if I had a girlfriend with no legs, I'd put a ceiling fan in my bedroom. Then I'd get a rope and hang her from the fan, turn it on, and lower her onto my thingy. That's how we'd have sex. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you were spinning me right around, baby. Right oh, around. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's a spinner. She's a spinner. Oh, my God. Your girl's a squirter? <laughs> I got better. <laughs> <laughs> I got She's an amputee and a spinner. <laughs> oh, that's fucking killer. Terrible. Oh, man. I'm going to make too many goddamn sex top jokes, so let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> let's move away because we're going to make too many horrible, horrible fucking jokes. Ren, I'm pretty sure you got more social cringe. Uh, title from the cosmopolitan actually we don't owe you sex and we never will when incels talk about redistribution of sex what they mean is redistribution of our vaginas <laughs> okay before we get into this article i just want to make things very perfectly clear i've actually that. had to have this argument with far too many people in the past. No one 
owes you sex, no matter how much attention you give that person, no matter how much time you have spent with that person, no matter how much money you have actually spent with that person, unless they're a hooker, they don't owe you sex. Because that's a business transaction that they are basically not following through on. I mean, honestly. <laughs> That's a, that's a contract. A contract's a contract. Yeah, that's, that's a contract at that point. Exactly. No one actually owes you that type of attention. But here's the funny part about this. No one owes you friendship either. Because I know that at some point this article, I haven't even read it. I haven't tried to read it. And I don't know what's in this article. But I am almost certain at some point they're going to mention something akin to the friend zone. And I am sick and tired of fucking consistently hearing about the fucking friend zone, either from my own actual real life friends who complain about the friend zone and being friend zoned, or the fucking women who are actually also friends of mine complaining about the guys complaining about the fucking friend zone. Shut the fuck up about the friend zone. It was a joke. The joke is officially over. Okay? It, it doesn't actually exist. It's not a real fucking plane of existence. But here's the funny thing, ladies. For anyone who actually does consistently complain about the fucking friend zone. Fuck off already. <laughs> All right? Fuck off with your fucking constant complaining. Bitch, 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 bitch. Look, he doesn't owe you friendship. You don't owe him sex. Don't fucking bitch at him because he's been trying to get in your pants this entire time and you're fucking offended because you just want to be friends the entire time. Clearly the two of you were not on the same goddamn wavelength. You were not on the same fucking page. He was already chapters ahead to basically trying out the Kama Sutra and you were still on chapter one. Hi, nice to meet you. Fuck off already. I am sick and tired of hearing the complaints on either side. But also, here's one for you men. Shut your fucking dick liquor. <laughs> enough with this bitching about fucking women are not giving it up enough. Dude, go fucking date a frisky redhead. It's actually a statistically <laughs> proven fact. Redheads are highly more sexual than blondes, brunettes, or anything. Like, redheads are very highly sexual. So go find a fucking natural redhead. Chances are she might want to hop on the bad foot and do the good thing or what however that fucking goddamn <laughs> phrase goes who knows i don't fucking care but stop bitching about this stuff look if, if the girl's not into you if she just doesn't want to hook up with you move the fuck on to the next goddamn chick all right i ain't sick and tired of hearing these people fucking bitch and complain about this i'm a man who's been single for a very long fucking time in my entire adulthood life all right you can actually equate my entire dating history to four years maybe five if i'm being generous okay that's four to five years of me actually having sex i'm in my fucking 30s that's a long time to have been single and no sex all right, I think Samaj is the only one that's a little more fucking on, on that level and shit like that. So I'm, I'm just sick and tired of fucking hearing these people bitching and complaining about the stupidest fucking things ever. Shut the fuck up and move on. Now, Rocky, I'm going to take my, I was gonna say, take my own. Huh? I was like, there's one group you forgot that can bitch. And those are the guys who have the chicks who flirt with them, hint that they might be willing to do something. Only to get the guy to move their couch for them and then cock lock them. Oh, yeah. We call that uh, leaving them on the hook or being yeah. le left on a hook. Those yeah, are that teases and not the good <clears throat> kind of teasing. Yeah, those kinds of people, they can fuck right off too. Like if they're going to consistently lay it on really heavy and thick that they're actually going to give you some booty or they're going to give you some dick or something like that, but they never actually do. They just keep using you for like companionship or manual move labor. And stuff like that. Those move are fucking horrible carpet. people. Yeah, move my couch, move my TV, buy me this, buy me that. Those are horrible fucking people and you have a right to actually complain about them. Go right ahead and complain about them. But in all honesty, the majority of the people I hear complaining about this stuff are people that just need to shut the fuck up about it. Like, I don't understand why most of the female friends that have complained about this on social media consistently keep complaining about it on social media. I've, I've actually, I stay silent most of the time when they do this. But every once in a while, I'll step in and I have to jump in. Who the fuck is this for? Who the fuck are you for doing this for? Like, okay, if you're doing this just to vent on social media, congratulations. Go, go, at, 
go right ahead. But like most of the people on your friends list agree with you to begin with. So why the fuck are you complaining about this anyways? Dude, what are I, you expecting to get some kind of opposition or you just want to see fucking people liking the shit out of what you're saying? No, they're just oh, mad because the they, can't, they can't have sex with the specific people that they want to have sex with. Because if they wanted to just have sex, you could go out and just have sex. There are guys who, who fucking are ugly as fuck, but they'll go out and get rejected by a fucking – a hundred women, but get laid fucking twice a week because they're meeting so many fucking women that they find the one out of a hundred. Yeah, yeah fucking, <laughs> you know, like it's a uh, if you're just focusing on one person for your, you know, for so goddamn long without fucking, you know, at least putting them on the back burner to go fucking explore other women, then that's on you, bro. That's yeah. on you. Um, also.